So this is part two of my intuitive last layer tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to flip up the corners of the last layer. Now, to do this, I'm gonna be using something called commutators, which are relatively straightforward, and they're an important concept to grasp as an advanced cuber. So I'm gonna go right ahead and give you an example of a commutator, and then I'll give you the actual definition so you can generalize it in your head. So for instance, let's suppose I have this cube and I hold it with my white side on the bottom. So I'm just holding it with F2L um, solved. And let's say I want to change the orientation of these two corners in the F2L. So this isn't even an intuitive last layer thing. It's just changing the orientation. But it actually is, um, it can be done very easily with a commutator. So. For instance, let's say I use F2L magic to change the orientation of just this corner on, on the bottom on the first layer. So for instance, I might do something like this, right? So I just did, I ejected it using F2L stuff, and then I reinserted it using a different F2L technique for inserting a piece. So what happened was I did mess up my my second and last layer, but I actually didn't change which pieces were on the bottom layer. So as you can see, my bottom layer still consists of all these same pieces and this corner piece. It's just that the corner piece is in a different orientation. And this is actually very important because if I do the inverse of what I just did, and it, the inverse is just the same F2L stuff in reversed order, then it will actually restore everything um, in the first layer, which is obvious, and in the second and, and whatever was on the third layer as well. And the reason this works is obviously because if you do something and then do its inverse, it doesn't change any part of the cube. But what might be less obvious is if I, let's say I redo that magic F2L stuff, that if I do the inverse with the same last top two layers at the same place in the same position facing me the same way, it will always restore the top two layers to be the way they were before I did the original thing. Um, and in the case where I don't change anything before doing the inverse, it will also restore the bottom layer. But let's say I turn the bottom layer by one. Well, if I do the inverse while I'm facing this the same way, it will restore the, the second and third layer to be exactly the way they were before I did that magic but the first layer will actually not be restored because I changed it. So I'm gonna do the inverse of the F2L stuff I did before. And as you can see, what happened is, now this middle ring is solved again. The, the top layer is the way it was before we did any of this nonsense, but the bottom layer is changed. And in fact, I'm gonna turn the bottom layer once because I turned it the other way while I was doing that. What happened with the bottom layer is that now these two corners have changed orientation. Because I changed the orientation of one, then I move the other one into its place, then change the orientation of it doing the inverse. So now I'm gonna fix these using the same logic, same F2L stuff, doing the inverse. And I just fix the orientation of those two using F2L logic on one corner to reorient it, then moving the other one in its place, and then using the inverse of that F2L logic to orient it. Now, in the case of a cube where only two edges need to be oriented, this will actually always happen to be the case. You will always, if you orient one thing by, by doing F2L logic, then you move the other corner in its place, and then you attempt to orient that corner uh, by doing the inverse, it will actually, the inverse will orient it correctly. Um, and that's just because of the possible configurations of the cube. Um, now, in this case, I don't have the last layer solved, so if a corner had already been flipped in the first layer and then another corner had been flipped in the top layer, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. But while we're doing intuitive last layer, just always know that if you only have two corners that need to be flipped up, the inverse of what you did to one will always fix the other one. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna hold the last layer as if it were the bottom layer, and I'm going to use the same logic I just showed you um, on the, uh, that I just demonstrated in order to orient these two corners on the last layer without breaking the F2L. 
So here's a corner, and if you can see, this corner can be oriented using this F2L um, magic right here. I'm just going to replace it in. So I ejected it one way, placed it back in the other way. And now I'm going to move this corner into the position where this corner was by doing a D turn. And then I'm going to do the inverse of that. And like I just said, doing the inverse if there are only two corners, it will fix the other corner if you do it the way I just showed you. And now that means that the F2L corners are indeed oriented. Now it's pretty straightforward when you just have two corners you want to orient. When you have three corners you want to orient, like this soon pattern right here, that's the name of it, um, you'll actually have to do what I just showed you twice. So what I'm gonna, what my goal is gonna be is I'm gonna orient this corner and leave this one intact. And when I orient this corner, I'm also going to change the orientation of this corner because I can't just twist one corner. I have to twist one the right way, then move another one in its place and do the inverse. So I'm going to fix this corner right here using F2L logic. And as you'll see, this is not too difficult to do. I fix it, right? And then now I'm going to do the inverse of that to this corner. And because there were more than one corner that needed to be oriented, that corner did not get fixed, although its orientation was changed. And now there are two corners left to orient on the last layer. So that's not too bad of a situation now. We can do this the way I just showed you by holding these in front. And I think I'll do it on the right side for a change just to give you an idea of how you can do it on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and do some F2L magic, bring the other corner in its place, inverse of the F2L magic, and there the corners are indeed oriented. So you can use this logic to fix any number of corner situations on the last layer. I'm not going to run through all of them because there are seven, um, and I think they're pretty straightforward once you know how to change the orientation of two corners at once. So uh, that was part two. Thanks for watching. And in the next part, I'm going to be showing you how to cycle three corners. And in that case, that would actually solve this cube. So that'll be exciting. So stay tuned for next time.